I wasn't around Cat Williams. I mean, I don't know what's, I mean, all I know is, to me, he a real bro, you know. What he did for me, i never forget that, man. I mean, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful what he did for me and my family, you know. And it's different because he didn't even know me, bro. The man invited me, gave me front row seats. I went home a week, two weeks, bro. When I was leaving the concert, he gave me 15K. I never forget that. I needed that money too. So I ain't. Rapper Lil Boozy, known for his unfiltered opinions and bold stances, has publicly backed Cat Williams in his recent feud with Steve Harvey. Boozy took to social media to defend Cat, praising him as a real nigger who keeps it real at all times. Boozy highlighted that Cat is one of the few public figures who isn't afraid to speak the truth, even when it involves other big names in the industry. In comment on what was said or nothing like that, I just know he a real for me. There was plenty of other successful people hollering free boosted, bro, but they ain't show me no love. Bro. I mean, Cat Williams, bro. He did some of the really shit out of Dude got a good heart, bro. So I wish him the best in anything he ever do, you know. I ain't seen him since, bro, but when I see him, I'm definitely going to bless him, bro. And I keep 15, 20 in my pocket at all the time. I've never seen nobody funny like Cat Williams that stand up. <laughs> Man, this did a joke about <laughs> the ladies. <laughs> Boozy emphasized his respect for Cat's authenticity, calling him a true personality who simply cannot lie. He pointed out that Cat's decision to speak openly about Steve Harvey's alleged behavior shows his commitment to being truthful, regardless of the consequences. Steve Harvey is pissed. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. Ever since Cat Williams did that epic, that was an epic interview, whether you believed him or not. Mr. Potato Head. He has a man unit. <laughs> you know, Steve in this video is pissed off. See, when you got somebody show that's 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 doing what they do to you, you gotta stay on that wall. Don't get off the wall. I didn't know what he meant by that. You got to in the Bible it said you got to stay on that wall. You got to stay on that wall like Spider-Man. You see, Spider-Man don't never let nobody take him off that wall. You got to stay on there. Like Spider-Man, whenever you can, you don't let nobody take you off that wall. I'm gonna tell you that right now. He a little ass hater. That's what he is, little leprechaun, you know? Cause he show. See, he don't even realize I got hands. I got hands. Yeah, I used to box. I'm not as quick as I used to be, but you come up close. You come up close, I'll knock your monkey ass out. I can still knock your monkey ass out. You heard what I said, I'll knock your monkey ass out. I would love to take him in the ring, just me and him. Me and Cat Williams. All I do is twist. I, I ain't fast, but I, boy, he won't know where that punch come from. I throw this, he'll go, what's up? Why? Bam, right in his face. And I know I'm a win. I know I'm a win, boy. He's a hater, always been a hater. I never liked his ass because I don't like that disrespect. I'm from Cleveland. Cat Williams is known not only for his sharp comedic wit, but also for his outspoken nature. Over the years, Cat has built a reputation as a comedian who doesn't shy away from speaking his mind, often addressing controversial topics and exposing hidden dynamics in the entertainment industry. His candid style has resonated with audiences who appreciate his unfiltered takes on real life issues. Steve Harvey has never been in a movie and what is that? That mean and when i think about it steve harvey really has never been in a movie basically he's saying steve harvey is not funny and he's only good enough to read cue cards on family feud and that's why he's on there because everybody just happy that he can read he also said steve was never homeless and he lying about his come up story he was making three thousand dollars a show and had five shows a week he said steve harvey be like thanks to my wife i'm where i'm at and that's a lie because you said that about the first and second wife that thinks like a man and i was in tears cat also showed mad love to bernie mac and d.l hughley he had nothing but respect for both of them 
He said the kings of comedy was hating on Bernie Mac because he was the funniest and they didn't want him to go last because Steve Harvey was last, but Bernie Mac was funnier than him. Cat also said he was supposed to be the fourth king of comedy, but they did Bernie Mac wrong, so he was not about to take that place. But this interview was really good. He talked about his life, how he adopted seven kids, how he left his house at 12 years old. It was a lot of great things in here. He also said Disney sent him a cease and desist because he tried to use the name Cat in the Hat, but Disney don't own Cat in the Hat, so maybe he meant DreamWorks. During his recent appearance on the popular show Club Shay Shay, Cat Williams opened up about various topics Topics, including his views on other comedians like Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac. In the interview, Kat was particularly vocal about the alleged tensions between Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac, suggesting that Steve has often misrepresented the truth. Okay, so hear me out. I saw an interview snippet about Cat Williams at the Shay Shay Club, and I had to watch it. So I'm only 15 minutes into it, and I'm already like, amen, cat, amen, baby, amen. Because he said he cannot have resentment or jealousy towards any of these other comedians or famous people because he said, I've never seen them have anything that I've ever wanted. And I'm just like, amen, baby, amen. And I'm just excited for the rest of this because he, he, don't, he don't care. He's real with you. And at the end of the day, he said he was not going to sell his soul. Amen, baby. In Jesus' name. I'm so excited for this. Boozy's support underscores the close relationship between the two entertainers, rooted in mutual respect for each other's raw and unfiltered approaches. Boozy's backing is significant, as it adds another layer to the ongoing conflict between Cat and Steve, highlighting that Cat isn't alone in his battle against what he perceives as dishonesty in the entertainment world. Now let's get deeper into it. Boosie went on live. I'm sorry, I don't think that was live. I think he was on Vlad TV. Boosie was on Vlad telling Vlad a story about how when he at first came home, Cat Williams reached out to give him two tickets to his show. So he took his girl, Boosie took his girl to the Cat Williams comedy show. Steve's career has not been without controversy, particularly regarding his alleged feud with the late Bernie Mac. Although both comedians were part of the iconic Kings of Comedy tour, there were rumors that the two did not get along well behind the scenes. According to some reports, Steve allegedly felt overshadowed by Bernie's unique comedic style and commanding stage presence. There is no progress without opposition. Sometimes the opposition comes from the most unsuspecting places. The devil is evil. He don't fight fair. This thing in life, that's not fair what they saying about me. That's not fair what they doing about me. It wasn't fair how they did Jesus, but they did it anyway. You are not going to get away through this thing called life without opposition. Be careful when you hear something that's laid out to be the truth. And because the person that's telling you what they say is true is speaking eloquently, don't be deceived by that. There are some people who know how to lie so well, they know how to sprinkle in just enough truth and wrap it inside their lies where they got you thinking that somebody telling the truth. You can't be righteous and negative at the same time. Righteous people do righteous things. Godly people do godly things. If the person you are talking to is talking ungodly, stop when they try to tell you they are from God and of God, because that ain't the truth. The voice of God does not have sin in it. When you are listening to anybody that's trying to make you think that they anti-Luminati or any of this, like that, be very careful because God's voice does not have sin in it. If you are of God, speaking from God, you will not do anything that's ungodly. In the wake of Cat Williams' explosive interview, Steve Harvey has responded, albeit indirectly. While he has not addressed Cat by name, many of Steve's recent comments on his radio show and other platforms seem to allude to the ongoing controversy. Steve has expressed frustration over individuals who, in his view, attempt to tear others down for personal gain, which many have interpreted as a veiled response to Cat's criticisms. It's cool, I give him love every time, had him on my show every time. But if you're going to do another stick, just tell the brother that you're sticking with. Dog, I'm going to be dogging you on the radio. But it's just, we just moving tickets. Then we can go in the huddle and go ready break. But now don't just do it. 
Then I come to town, I hear about it. Say what you want to say about me. When you get through saying it, they going to say my name. I'm going to walk out there and do what I'm gifted to do. There ain't nothing you could do about that. What you finna do? This ain't no basketball game. You can't block my... There have also been reports that Steve Harvey has made veiled threats against Cat Williams without directly naming him. You know, I feel like a lot of us are, are fans of people until we're, we're not. Meaning that uh, sometimes we look at stuff surface level, like somebody come out with a show, we think they funny, we watch it but we don't know the real person. And once you get to know them, when things are brought to the light, then it's just kind of like, hmm, you know, how much is, is this stuff real or fake? But uh, Cat Williams always seemed to be his authentic self. You know, I, I believe Cat Williams is a superstar. He's not a mega star. And that's not his fault, it's just, you know, he didn't take the bait, so he is where he is. You know, he's famous enough to be known, but uh, I don't know if it's like global to that point. Like people can know about him in other countries, but not to the max of like Kevin Hart and, you know, stuff like that. But I just feel like um, Steve Harvey saying what he said, it's just not only is it late, but when when if he would just say like he's lying, the stuff he said ain't true. It's fabricated. This and this. He just mad that he said it. So it is what it is, man. Bernie Mac was a comedian who commanded respect and love from audiences and fellow comedians alike. Known for his unfiltered and raw comedic style, Bernie was not afraid to touch on topics that others would shy away from, making him a relatable figure to many. Bernie Mac, I don't yeah. think people hated Bernie. I don't think nobody hated Bernie. If you hated Bernie, you just hated black people. Steve Harvey, maybe? Just... <laughs> Steve hated uh, Bernie yeah. Mac, yes. And then... <laughs> but I feel like if you hated Bernie Mac, you just hated black people. Yeah. Like, you didn't like black people in general. Uh, Bernie was also known for giving good advice to those around him, including his fellow comedians. His ability to connect with people on a personal level was one of his most defining characteristics, and his untimely death left a void in the comedy world. I'm a comedian. I, you know, I'm not a black comic. I didn't want a black show. Mm -hmm. I want a show. I make everybody laugh. Yeah. If you focus on being the best within yourself, all that stuff will come. Right. I hear people say, get your money on, get your money on. I hate that. I hate, I mean, and, and that's your motivation? If you do well, the money will come. That's what I know. The tension between Steve Harvey and Bernie Mac, as described by Kat and others, highlights the complexities of relationships within the comedy world. Bernie Mac's in Ocean's Eleven. Mm. Steve Harvey called the studio to try get Bernie Mac's role. He didn't like Bernie Mac. <laughs> <laughs> like basically Bernie Mac's funnier point yeah, blank period yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't like him so he tried to take his stuff there's so much stuff and the best one <laughs> well, just, well Harvey Weinstein one is it well, no, tried no, no, to give him a head <laughs> yeah, that, but it was also because yeah, he, he said he was talking about R. Kelly and Harvey Weinstein before it even come out yeah, and yeah. everybody said oh you're crazy da, 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 you're yeah. tearing black man down oh, da, 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 da. Yeah. Harvey Weinstein begged him to stop because he was saying stuff yeah and then it all came out in the end. But nobody's gone back and said, oh, well, Cat was right. Yeah. I mean, to be fair though, we all knew about R. Kelly. He ignored yeah, yeah. because he made bangers. That's the bottom line. Like on Love, another comedian familiar with the dynamics between Steve and Bernie, has previously stated that Steve was scared of Bernie Mac's success and influence. According to Faison, Steve's discomfort stemmed from the fact that audiences loved Bernie for his authenticity and unique comedic voice, which sometimes overshadowed Steve's performances. Why do you think he had difference? Steve Harvey had difference. Mm -hmm. Steve had differences with him when they went on Steve the Steve was Cup. scared of him. They had differences. No, they ain't had no differences. Bernie, Bernie is never going to come at you any kind of way but a gentleman. He ain't going to say nothing. Even if he got a problem with you. When he had a problem with me, he didn't say he's on nothing. He's like, well, you know, uh, We'll see. Bernie Mac's daughter also expressed her appreciation for Cat Williams' willingness to defend her father, highlighting the respect and admiration that many still hold for Bernie's legacy. I, it's always been um, 
as far as I've ever witnessed in watching my dad, it's always been um, kind of cutthroat. Like, you'll have, you know, people beefing, like, same as in within your family. Just because y'all related don't mean y'all all get along, right? It's, comedy's no different. Um, but for me, Cat Williams has my utmost appreciation and respect for giving my dad his props and his flowers. And I felt like it was genuine. There are some people who have given you know my dad his flowers now that he's dead that i'm looking at like you know doggone well he wasn't doing it when he was alive and that not just famous people just people all across the board as my dad used to say you ever want to be loved by everybody you ever want to be special just die it's real easy to give lip service when somebody dies and you oh they were so wonderful and that's not how you felt when they were alive but when cat spoke of my dad for me I felt his heart. I felt that it was genuine and I appreciate While on stage personas can project camaraderie and humor, the reality behind the scenes is often much more complicated with rivalries, conflicts, and power struggles that remain largely unseen by the public. That's oh. just big marriage. Oh. Yeah. And that's my point. Kat and Steve are older than us. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's how I know they too old. You gonna throw a punch, your hip gonna dislocate. <laughs> Your body's going to fall out of the pocket. Yes, he said, I still get my hip underneath it and it'll stay on the ground after you, that. <laughs> You're going to be hurt until Labor Day 2028. They at that age where the other person don't have to hurt them. They will end up hurting <laughs> themselves trying to fight. Steve Harvey is 67. Angel. He close to my mama's age. Cat 52. Now Cat's still running fast. Cat Williams' willingness to speak openly about these dynamics and his refusal to be silenced has sparked conversations about authenticity and integrity in entertainment. Talking about days, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you got a lot of other celebrities upset, you know what I'm saying? The ones who Cat called out in the interview, but Boosie ain't one of them peoples. Boosie's like, that's his man. Uh, Cat Williams kept it a hundred with him, man. When he got home, Cat Williams, you know, peeled off 15K for him and he appreciated. He's grateful for it. And you got people talking about Cat Williams, bro. He just doing this for attention and clout and all these things. But he was so broke, you know, uh, uh, he looked out for Boosie and peeled off 15K for him, and Boosie appreciates it. On January 23rd, 2024, Cat Williams appeared on Club Shay Shay and delivered a headline-grabbing interview where he chose to expose various behind-the-scenes conflicts in the comedy world. <laughs> Boy, check me out, right? As I sit here and sip my tea, my down south Georgia sweet tea, Boy, hey. It's January 3rd, 2024. Y'all keep this date in mind because this is the date that Cat Williams chose violence over everything. He's exposing everybody and I'm sitting here sipping the tea with his ass because I love it. Expose their ass. People that y'all think that this, that, and the third, boy, they really ain't it, boy. Y'all get on this two and a half hour show, boy. Woo! Cat Williams going in, boy. Keep drinking that cognac, brother. Keep drinking that cognac. Let that shit rip, because they say a goddamn a drunk man tell it all, ain't it? Boy, and they tell the truth, too, right? Whew. Boy, he going in on their ass, Mr. Postman. Yes, sir. I'm going to sip my tea and watch. Cat candidly discussed the hidden dynamics between prominent comedians, including alleged tensions, lies, and rivalries. Now, after Shannon Sharp had released that clip, this is what Cedric had to say. Now, Cedric starts off and says, and all that tough talk is corny AF, and I'm a grown-A man, and none of that ish is gonna go like you think. He said, you do you, and I got this over here. Now, he follows up and says, revisionist history. Regardless of whatever Cat's opinion, my career cannot be reduced to one joke Cat Williams claims as his. He said, I've been in over 40 movies, my specials and my brand speaks volumes for I am the people I have put on, including Cat in the Hat at the Gibson Amphitheater. I don't know if Uncle gonna beat those allegations, but Cat Williams had more to say specifically about Steve Harvey. Mark Curry had all the smoke. 
Now listen to what he said when he sat down on the Mike and Donnie show. So what's up with you and Steve, man? I ain't nothing, I ain't nothing with me. Well, Steve stole my material on his show, so I had a beef on that. On what show? On, when he was on his the, the, the bullshit talk show he had. And he did he, he did all my Halloween material, one Halloween. I'm watching that. Somebody called me and said, man, homeboy doing your material. So he did my whole Halloween run. And I know he didn't think of it. You know, this, this is true stuff that really happened to me. Uh -huh. And so my thing is, you don't have to do that, homeboy. And yes, we have the material. Pay attention. Cat Williams didn't tell us what jokes Cedric the Entertainer had stole from him, but Steve Harvey definitely stole that joke from Mark Curry, and he needs to give him his flowers. Cat Williams and Steve Harvey's feud has been simmering for years, but it intensified following Cat's recent interview. The tension between the two comedy giants stems from Cat's claims about Steve's dishonesty and his portrayal of fellow comedian Bernie Mac. No, why the fuck do we got Cat Williams and Steve Harvey going at it? Now, as y'all know, Cat Williams did a tell all, just tell all. Ain't nobody asked him, he just told it all on um, Shining Sharp motherfucking podcast, right? So, he ended up telling all these people business. Now, shit, says BGTV telling everybody to get in the field. This what the fuck um, Steve Harvey just told Cat Williams. Like, shit, when I catch you, Ricky, when I catch you... I'm gonna knock the crime out your ass. What? Like, come on, man. Y'all be having too much time with y'all head. I'm talking about ever since BGTV don't talk about fucks get the field. Ain't nobody want to argue. You got Courtney J got E. Kane scared because she wanted to get in the field. She said, no more argue, no more videos, no more clout for your ass. Then you got motherfucking Cosmo and one the argue. Cosmo and Fabo into it. Fabo don't made a whole video on the diss track. She said she don't want to argue no more either. She wants to get in the field. I'm talking about everybody wants to get in the field because of BGTV. Like, shit, motherfucker said ain't no more talking. What about them hands? And Steve Harvey just came out and said he don't even care about the motherfucking field. You can meet him at the studio because it's about to go down. Man, I'm telling you, you don't even got to watch TV no more. Just get your ass on TikTok and you're going to find out everything you need to know. Y'all have a good one. Despite their personal conflicts, both Cat Williams and Steve Harvey have made significant contributions to the world of comedy. Cat is celebrated for his unfiltered style, sharp social commentary, and fearless approach to difficult topics. See? It's a prime example to man your damn business. Everybody has so much to say. What Cat Williams said about Steve Harvey. Now look at him, Steve. They back cool. That's why I don't be getting in phone business like that, man. That's why I stay to myself. I ain't got time. Look at Steve smiling from ear to ear. You see all 58 of them veneers. Look at Cat. Cat got a fresh perm for this goddamn picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I tricked the whole goddamn. Who you know can goddamn trick the whole goddamn universe and get a lot of views. Goddamn, that's, that's some real life pimp shit. Cat fucking Williams, bro. I don't get in phone issues, bro. But it, next day, look at him. I look at Steve and Kate. He tricked us. Steve, Steve and Kat tricked the whole world, man. And y'all fell for it. I already know what's going on. That's why I, I stayed out of my life. I stayed in my life. I ain't got time for that. Look at him. Yeah, man, I tricked all y'all. That's it for today's video. Stay tuned until next time.